Back in 2009, a certain game was released. A new Mario game finally hit the shelves, and it was... New Super Mario Bros. Wii. This game would become one of the best-selling Mario platformer games ever sold by Nintendo. It ended up selling a total of 30 million copies, ending up on the third place in terms of sales. But, <laughs> this game also had its flaws during development, and there are quite a number of features and levels that didn't make it in. And today we're going to take a look at a couple of those. Let's start with some levels with either flaws or that didn't even make it in the game at all. First up, the file for one coin, only accessible in coin battle mode, includes an unfinished version of the final area from World 7 Tower. It misses many objects and coins and also has several layout changes. Mostly small things like adding an invisible fire flower and coin block at the top, some extra cannons and platforms here and there, that kind of stuff. This could have been an early test version to see how it would work in terms of gameplay, since it wasn't really polished. And after this short test ride, they polished it and added all the extra gameplay elements to make it more balanced. But this is just pure speculation. Now the file for 2Coin, a level which is a wacky version of World 1-1 from Super Mario Bros, includes a version of the original bonus room, but there's no way to access it from the overworld. There are lots of coins attached to a spinning controller. The reason for removal is probably that the pipe which was supposed to lead into this area had a star coin put into it, and it glitches now when you enter it. But this is a bit of a silly reason to scrap it all together. They could have just moved the coin. This would fix the entire coin problem, since everything else looks pretty normal, but there could have been other complications with the room. The following things that we're going to point out are mostly mistakes made by the programmers. For example, leaving in certain items or bonus rooms. Like this, a single tile located to the left of the zone in one tower. Probably left there on accident. Tower 2 has an unused entrance with ID 0 in area 4, which looks like some sort of unfinished area with blue coins. 4-1 has loads of coins underneath the zone, for no real reason. 5-1 has a lone red Koopa Troopa located underneath the zone, yet again left there with no purpose or reason. 6-1 has 7 coins located underneath the zone that are completely unreachable. 7-6 has a small unused sprite located underneath the zone, but no sprite is assigned to it. 8-7 has an unused auto scroll path for both zones. It mostly seems to follow the level design, but it's way too fast in certain spots for the bone cooster to catch up, and is completely wrong just before the ending of the first zone, which indicates that the level was different there. The auto scroll and event activation sprites are still in the level, but the events don't match, so the auto scroller never starts. Yet again, something they planned, but it didn't really work out for some reason. The final castle has a bunch of tiles outside of the first zone, and a whole bunch more outside of the midpoint room. Yet again, why? Well, these were most likely left behind by the programmers on accident when they were working on the game. They weren't supposed to be there, but in time they forgot about it and left it in. Luckily enough, you don't notice it when playing the game. Now Nintendo always introduces new variations on their enemies like the Goombas. There are loads of different ones in the series. They also added a new one in this game, the Prickly Goomba, which we see in 9.7. But he had an earlier model under the name IGA Karibo.arc. It lacks the frames for the Goomba's eyes, has different animations, and looks less polished overall. This was most likely the early version of this enemy. They improved it later on, and the result is seen in the game. Now they also had some features that they wanted to put in the game, but didn't end up in the game. In pre-release screenshots, we see that the game originally had a red and a blue Yoshi. But they were changed to pink and light blue in the final version. But the file names for the Yoshi model still follow the old coloring. They are called Y-Tex Red Arc and Y-Tex Blue Arc. It's unknown why they changed the colors. It might be so that the boys would have the blue Yoshi and the girls would have the pink Yoshi. This does make sense from a marketing standpoint. But there's more. The game was originally going to have Mega Mario, but it seems to have been canned very early on. The EN item, which is an actor that manages the various power-up items, has an empty value which loads a mushroom model from ibigkinoko.arc. But there's no way to enable it without ASM hacking. The file ibigkinoko.arc does not exist and is not referenced by the game otherwise. Also, as other evidence of Mega Mario having been planned, 
The flying pipe objects were ported from New Super Mario Bros, but they're not used in the final game. So could there have been a problem with the Mega Mario power-up in this game? Or was it just crap because of gameplay reasons? Well, they did try to implement it in the game, since they even ported objects. But we have no idea at all. There aren't any clues or hints that can answer this question, so it will remain a question. And so you see that this hit of a Mario game had its flaws, and also had some removed content. And this is not even all of it. There are loads of removed textures, from backgrounds to palm trees. But this game ended up being one of the best in terms of sales, and 30 million is pretty insane. Welcome to the end screen everybody, Thiefbug wasn't here because he's dying of throat sickness, so go to his Twitter and give him some love, give him some loving that he has never received, give him more love than you would give your husband or wife, give him all the loves, do it.